This is the double cheeseburger strategy. Yeah! <laughs> we have been uh, generously donated this from Crackity. He said, check it out. It's worth checking out. Uh, I was the chance that this is one of those situations where they want us to check it out because they win. I got a feeling. But it's going to be Lash, Crackity, and Cool. Double HRE and Amalian. Meanwhile, they're going to be up against the rank number one in free v freeze. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it is this guy. The guy playing his French. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. I wouldn't even know where to begin. But his teammates are going to be Airstrike 900 and Victor. I've definitely seen Airstrike near the top of the leaderboards before. Uh, not too familiar with Victor. Let's see what they can do. Because we're going to be hopping into Lipany. Lipany that is, yeah. in my opinion, one of the worst maps, I feel like, for free v freeze. Lippany generations in 1v1s is kind of weird right now, right? Lippany generations in 3v3s is like someone really decided to pull out the crack cocaine. I I don't really know where to begin with this. It's <laughs> such a mess of a map. God. <laughs> Honestly, it's like that person that decides to, that getting double of everything on the pizza isn't good enough. They decide to get quadruple of everything on the pizza. They Based on the toppings, they select beef Twice so they can click double on both of the beef entries. So insane. Let's see what they got in mind though. Like double HRE is interesting. Is this gonna <gasps> Oh my god, it's gonna be a Marlin's Pro Scout play into double Burgre spam. I can already tell. <laughs> it has to be. Like like think about it. So so Marlins can very naturally go into Pro Scouts. Because they have naturally faster scouts than any other Civ. They're also fierce fighters. So if you try to clash with them, it doesn't work very well. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. You could also play around cows. Cows are phenomenal. Like, I honestly think Crackity is just... He's the, uh, he's the cow in this game. And Core and Lash are going to milk him. That probably gives the wrong images. But that's basically the goal here. So the, the other way to the cow point that's being brought up. He could set up a mill in each of their base and produce cows out of it. Why is this important? Cow gathering rate is around 0 0.8, 0 0.84. It's superior to farms for most civs. It's basically up at deer rate. In fact, it's meant to be even better than it is. I talked to one of the devs, and apparently it's meant to be boar gathering rate. So from what I've seen from, from some of the community, it's not working that way right now. It's co closer to like 0 0.8 than 0 0.9. Hope that gets fixed. If it does, this is going to be a filthy player, though. And the logic is that, by the way, both the other players just build Burgrave. They just spam Burgrave units because they can afford it at that stage. And the cool thing is if your opponent, uh, like if your teammate Malian, <laughs> opponent, <laughs> if your teammate Malian uh, comes and builds a mill right next to your Arkin Chapel and keeps producing out of them, you'll always be in the gathering range of the Arkin. So you'll get that extra 40% gathering rate, which in Castlage you can inflate even further. Uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself though. Maybe I'm imagining someone's not there. I still think it could be the Pro Scouts play into the Cows later. I really like Pro Scouts for, for Marlins. Even when they're playing on their Lonesome, it's a very good tech on some maps. But on team maps, Pro Scouts is still very desirable because there's so many deer stacks across the map. And no sieve in the game does Pro Scouts better than Marlins because of the fact that the Scouts are actually fighting units once you get the Tawar Scout status. And they also move a lot quicker up at Horseman speed. See what they got in mind though. On the other side, we have got we haven't even talked about the other guys, right? French, Chinese, plus English. A little bit more layered. French player probably just gonna be spamming cavalry, creating space while the Chinese player is trying to boom up a little here. Uh, it also could be the French player as the boomer. Considering this guy's ranked number one, that's something that we sometimes see is like people just give over to the highest rank. They say, you know, you get to be the boomer because you'll do more with it naturally. Uh, I am expecting that Victor is gonna just be the Lombo spammer boy. Just try to draw as much attention as possible. Can be a little bit dangerous up against HRE as they can just go knights or heavily armed units like the men-at-arms and you're discounted. But it makes sense that out of these three sieves that you'd be the one kind of creating that space. How are these Arkans looking? Pretty damn good one here, actually. He has everything in range in Lash's base. Cool. <laughs> Needs to take coaching lessons from Lash on how to place Arkin Chapels. Rubbish. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> yep, there it is. It's the mill play. It's the mill play on both bases here. <laughs> well, well called, chat. Well called. 
I still would have loved to have seen the Pro Scouts on top of this, but maybe that's just overkill that stage. Uh, the reason why Pro Scouts also makes a lot of sense here is right now you're paying 100 gold for 500 food. Alternatively, if you just go for Pro Scouts and you pick up these deer and return them, it's the same gathering rate, 350 on each deer, right? So definitely, definitely in some way, some way that it can maybe optimize further. But yeah, like I said, I mean, maybe there's someone in chat that can confirm. Maybe they've done some tests as well. I really need to do some far tests on this. Um, there was a Reddit thread about the cows, and I said that the gathering rate is the same as ball. And some of the responses was that from their tests, it was 0 0.8 food. It's still better than farms and sheep. Still much better than farms and sheep. But let's have a look. Poor little cattle comes out. Ooh, nom, 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 nom. Straight away, no hesitation. Time to eat, boys. Now, we can't pay attention to this gathering rate to figure out whether it's ball, remember, because it's in, it's wholly inspired, so it's 40% better. But just look at the speed. Look at how quickly they're going to unlock what they need. Core is almost there already. Just look at his resource bank. <laughs> and Crackety says, well, Core, cool. yeah, you get one too. I hope they like beef. <laughs> this is the team synergy I was looking for, folks. Now, the question is whether they'll be able to cross the map quick enough, though. What is this? Victor went for a TC drop in front of his base on the deer. Oh, man, the tight... <gasps> Timing. The timing could actually kill him here, by the way. Like, with how quickly Lash is getting what he needs, the Burgrave drop into the Mass Men arms. By the time this TC goes up, it could have two two minutes of life before it's dead. <laughs> there it is. It's the Burgrave. Well, you got all this beef. It's time to make a burger, boys. Let's go. Oh, baby. And meanwhile, the other side, Lamal, imagine being China and thinking you get to TC Boom. Imagine being England and thinking you get to TC Boom. <laughs> meanwhile, Crackley is like, I'm forever a feudal boy. Oh, he needs to be careful uh, his villagers. Oh, Crackley. It's too busy producing uh, cattle in other people's bases. It's the Malian beef burger. It truly is. Oh, man. That's a good name. That might be the name of the video. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's more like... No, you know what this is? Okay. Burgrave sounds pretty burgery. There's two HRE players. This is the double cheeseburger strategy. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, man. Like, I, I don't know how this doesn't end ugly for Team 2 because they aren't ready for aggression. They got a few stone walls up. Uh, it's a few wood walls up. If they stone walls, I feel very comfortable for them. Their French player went for aggression, right? He hasn't really done much with this, though. He killed like two Malian villages, and that's all he was able to achieve. And I'm hesitant to say he'll get more out of this. I mean, crackety. Okay, he, he has the reaction speeds of an 80-year-old lady, but it seems like it doesn't matter. It's like Orange is going to be forced to go in here. Now, there are textiles, so it's a little bit harder to kill Crackety this time. A few of them are going to flop dead, but damage done in return might be higher. There's already maces in the hands, of course. Meanwhile, men at arms on the other side, not only maces, but the two-handed as well come... Oh, wait, no, he hasn't got maces yet. He went two-handed. Interesting. It makes sense, though. So, Core is going to be closer to the French player. Meanwhile, for Lash, he's just chasing after a, an English player who's going to have lightly armored units. And oh my god, the walls. Buddy, those walls aren't going to save you. <laughs> I mean, he at least full walls it, right? But you have to keep going along. Shuffle over, buddy. You're going to need more walls than this. But he stops. What? The Victor doesn't have the wood! And he was trying to go for Castle Age. Oh no. Meanwhile, Court knocking at your door. What the dude, the torches? <laughs> How is that still in the game? Oh my god. You can actually hold torches at enemies. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Lash making his way in. White Tower was forced out of Victo. Damn. Core in the meantime needs to be a little bit careful. He's only been pushing the men arms so far. Would benefit from some spears simply because what's happening right now is the Chinese player keeps cycle charging him, or the French player keeps cycle charging him to slow him down. The men arms. I think he's. I, I think Lash just needs to group men at arms and torch the the TC. It's definitely his best play he can make right now. He's got double ranged armor upgrade. This is gonna be so effective. Meanwhile, new walls. <laughs> Air Strike is playing tower defense games right now. C4 knocking at your door. Oh my god, they burned it down so fast. It's, you can't. Like, this is becoming trivial. There's only so long you can hide behind your walls before the meat patty comes on through. Tantalizing and tasty. And TC is already on fire. I mean, that's going to be gone as well. <laughs> this game. How many men at arms do you think Core has right now? It has to be 35, right? 35 exact. Okay, Lash has probably 25. 26. Dude. Man, I'm on my numbers. I can feel it. <laughs> Just look at the queue. Everybody do the conga. Everybody do the conga. Yo, but cool. Bruh. Where's the marching drill? Bruh. Bruh. Cool. Where is the marching drills right now? Oh, he's having too much fun. He's like, if I had marching drills, I'd kill them too quickly. Let's kill them slower. They are wasting a lot of time on this outpost. Fortified outpost at that. But everything is just flat like the beef. Look how many there are. Oh my god. And you keep giving core wood as well? <laughs> this guy. He's gonna run out of gold soon though. Oh goodness gracious. How the how the English holding. Well the white tower is holding. I'll give him that. However, it looks like Lash has had his fun with the English and now it's onto the French base. <laughs> the French base is less defended. <laughs> this is so many coming in. I mean, if they just both go to one to, towards one player, they're dead. It's almost like they're toying with their food at this stage. Like, no, no, none of you are allowed to reboom here. You're all stuck like this forever. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything's gonna idle on the Chinese eco as well. They snuck out the berries. I mean, that's the one lifeline right now. If that gets spotted out, he's done. No, they snitched. He knows. Oh god. I mean, four men at arms are gonna shut this all down. Then you have no food gathered. So how do you build units to defend? You need units as well. And crossbows aren't cheap in the food department. Eighty per. Good luck with that. Villagers just doing the dance around their base. Like, follow us for an eternity. Core says, why can't I reach them? Why am I so slow? Sir, I believe marching drills is there. There we go. So he's able to get close to him quick enough this time. Meanwhile, Lash, now starting to escalate his count, isn't diving the base just yet. By the way, this may look pitiful from Core, but remember, he's diving double TC layout up against the Chinese. This is hard. It hurts. The fact he's still got this many men at arms alive consistently is impressive. They'll just force back home again. Lash. I, I, oh, God. <gasps> he knows. He has to know. He's like, w where are you getting gold right now? There's only one possibility, right? Right? He's heading up. He doesn't know exactly where, but he can sense it. The berry boys have been found. Dear workers say, oh, dearie me, we need to get out. They've gone full Schmeagle. Now two players are going to be full idle eco <laughs> What a strategy. <laughs> this is why I want more sieves faster, okay? For the team games, folks. These sort of dynamics are what we need more of. We saw how fun the idea of pro scouts sharing out to your teammates is. But the double cheeseburger really does take the cake, funnily enough. I wish Idol Eco was represented accurately in this game. Like, because this is not. Because they're moving, they're not Idol Eco. But they really are. They really, really are. Half of his economy is just not working. 
See, Burgrave usually has an issue, folks. Burgrave usually kind of like pitters off around now for doing it this long. Like you either won the game or you don't. But with unlimited cattle, it's never going to stop. Just look at the line from Lash's pace. Everybody do the conga. Everybody do the <laughs> Oh, but I would still love to see them wrap in some spears, though, just for the knights. Like, the, the knights are a looming threat. Like, if he gets up to enough of them, he can he can actually beat men at arms. If you're a mid-map. If they're in your base, though, not so easy to do. Because if they're in your base, you can't keep cycle charging because they'll find something else to attack. Has Kraken even got an army? Yes. He has a grand total of, I think, one scout, I think. Or did he lose it? He still has one scout, folks. Woohoo! <laughs> Here he is. Dude, look at him snitching. They don't even care about him. He's like, so not only has Kraken guided them towards a win condition with all the food, he's also guiding them with his everlasting vision. What a lad. All right, boys, you've had your fun. I think you need to find a way to end the game soon. This has been fun, but it is, it's kind of reaching a point where you, you start going, uh, uh, maybe Spears, maybe Langstack, like mix it up a little because there's a lot of crossbows coming to play. And I can't help but feel how effective this strategy would have been very early on if they found a way to like fold towards the same target. Like when, um, so when, you saw Lash go onto the French base if Core joins him as well. They can like blitz his entire base, right? But now they are getting, they're getting picked apart. The crossbows are unanswered and I see Ajabs coming through. Uh-oh. You're starting to see the weakness of the men at arms. Like I've seen this many times where they just lose the Knights long term. You need to kill soon or you're going to get killed. Crackley now is the only player not in Castle Age, and he never will be in this game. <laughs> Ever. I just keep looking at the mini-map and seeing this. Oh, my God. They had, like, such a, a brutally overwhelming lead, and it does feel like it's kind of been thrown away. I do like this switch up out of core, though. Horseman is a good choice. You've got enough infrastructure now that you can kind of do the Burgrave in a different way via stables. I'd love to see Lash do the same. Oh my God, he's got too many cow. <laughs> okay, so here's how we level this play up, Crackity. You need to, because you're building too many cattle units, you need to build a ranch or two here. So you're getting some passive food income for yourself. And then like it, it becomes, it becomes like stockpiling. You know how like Europe right now is stockpiling a lot of gas that they're not using yet? It's that type of thing. It's there when you need it. Oh, it's a villager pool. So Kor is doing something spicy here. Oh, he hasn't... Oh, he is. He's going for a keep drop. I wondered. I was checking his stone. He's going to drop a keep right in their face. I think he's actually done it. It looked a bit shaky for a moment, but this renewed assault, it's too much for the French player. He can't do it anymore. And that's why. So Lash... Uh, sorry, not Lash. Kor got given the stone by Crackity, and it's because, yes, he was generating stone on the Manta Quarry, right? No, no, he switched back to gold. But I think he was maybe on stone before and was gathering as well. So the keep drop's going to come in. <laughs> There's no way you can stop it. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the face of the poor French player, his time has come to an end. They finally slowed down on the Congo line of death. They regrouped their troops and they have done it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Malian double cheeseburger. It's a thing of beauty. It's truly a thing of beauty. <laughs> Thank you, Crackity, for that absolute gem. That that was exactly what I needed in life, actually. That was, oh, c'est la magnifique.